coming along and ministering to us this evening. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer, please, before we open and read from the Word. Father in heaven, we thank Thee, Lord, tonight for Thy grace and for Thy mercy and truth. We pray, Lord, now that You'll put a hush of eternity over our thinking, over our meditating tonight, and cause us all tonight to think and to hear Thy voice. For Jesus' sake, amen. I want you to turn in your Bibles, please, to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. The Gospel of Matthew, and we're in chapter 7. Throughout the four Gospels, friends, you'll find tonight there are many, many, many lovely things that the Lord Jesus had to say. Throughout the four Gospels tonight, you'll, you'll never hear truer. You'll never hear more sweeter. You'll never hear tonight more gracious words ever spoken than those spoken by the lovely Lord Jesus. Words that bring hope. Words that bring life. And as Peter would say, words that bring salvation. Words that came from the lips of Christ. I'll tell you something now, friend. No wonder one said of old, never man speak like this man, and nobody ever spoke like the Lord Jesus to me. Do you remember that day in Calvary's Hill? when they were crucifying the Lord Jesus to the cross, the words that came from His lips were these words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even in the midst of pain, the Lord Jesus uttered those words, words tonight of forgiveness, and I'm sure the dying thieves that day could say, never man speak like, like this man. What about the troubled disciples when the Lord Jesus told them about his death? You remember the words the Lord Jesus brought to those troubled disciples? Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, ye believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And I'm saying it again, mansions, not rooms, mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Ah, oh, friends, those disciples would tell you tonight, never man speak like this man. Do you remember the lady who was taken in adultery, caught in the very act? Do you remember the Lord Jesus spoke lovely words to her? Neither do I condemn thee, dear. You go and sin no more. Never man speak like this man. No words, no sweeter words, no gracious words, no more, no friends, purer words were ever spoken apart from the words that came from the lovely Christ. Words we all find life and light and hope in. And tonight the Lord wants to speak to us through the words of the Lord Jesus tonight words that he spoke. But these are words tonight you don't want to hear Christ say. Words that you don't want to hear Christ say. You say to me, George, is there words in the Gospels that Christ spoke that I wouldn't want to hear? You mark my words tonight. <laughs> These are words you don't want to hear Christ say. You'll find them in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. 
verse 23, and this is the Lord Jesus speaking, and this is what he says. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I say those are words, friends, you'd never want to hear Christ say. In that text this evening, you'll find there are words of exposure. Because the Lord Jesus says, and then will I profess unto them. Now, who are they them tonight? Who's the Lord Jesus talking about? I'll tell you who he's not talking about tonight. He's not talking about heathens. And he's not talking about people who never believed in God. And he's not talking about people tonight who didn't believe that Christ was the Son of God. I'm telling you, it'll scare you tonight who he was talking about. Do you know who he was talking about tonight? And do you know who he is talking about? He's talking about people who named the name of Christ. That's who he's exposing tonight. He's not exposing atheists. He's not exposing people who never believed in God. I'm telling you, friend, he's exposing tonight people who name the name of Christ. I'm telling you, friend, it would scare you just to listen to what the Lord's going to say tonight through the words of Christ, not through the words of George McConnell, but through the words of Christ tonight. Then will I profess unto them. Who are them, Lord? Them that named my name. Who are them that named his name? Well, take a wee look at verse number 21. Look at what it says. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, look at verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. Did you notice three times in that text? The people who he was professing about and the people who he's exposing were who were going about ministering in his name. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name have we not done marvelous works? In thy name, in thy name, in thy name. In Christ's name, friends. That's who he's exposing today. People who name the name of Christ. In that day, when all the unsaved are before the judgment bar, he says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name we cast out devils. And in thy name we have done many wonderful works. In thy name to me. I'm telling you, it's scary. You know what scares me to me? How many people is holding on to an empty profession? I'm telling you, friend, Judas preached the gospel. Judas performed miracles. Judas done many wonderful things. But he was a fake. And he went to hell. 
you read Acts chapter 8 tonight, you'll find another hypocrite. Another man who, it says, believed. I'll tell you, not only believed, he was baptized. He believed in baptism. But his heart was still wicked before God. And I will profess unto them, who will you profess unto the Lord? People who have named my name. People who worked in my name. People who preached in my name. That's who I'm exposing to me. You see, this is real. What makes it scary tonight? These are the words of Christ. These are the words of God's Son tonight. Do you know I preached in a gospel mission way back in 2011? And in the opening night of that mission, I preached on the woman by the well. And I don't know what made me do this, but I done this. And well, it was the Lord. And what I'm up here telling you, I don't know what happened, but it was the Lord that made me do it. You remember the point where the Lord said to the woman by the well, go call thy husband. And what did she do? She says, I have no husband. And the Lord Jesus talked back to her and he says, thou hast answered well, thou hast no husband, for he had five husbands. And on that night, friend, I paused, and this is what I said. I said, and I'm going to say it tonight, you see every one of us in this meeting, myself included, the Lord Jesus can see clean through us. He knows you, he knows me through and through, friends. And the thing that saved this woman by the well, she confessed her sin. After that meeting was over, this lady came out, and man, she had the lovely hat on. And she was dressed, and she had a Bible in her hand, but she came out in floods of tears. And I thought perhaps maybe her husband had died suddenly, or something had happened. I didn't know what happened. She was in an awful state. And I said to Bertie Johnson, the pastor there, say, Bertie, you shake hands at the door. I'm way in here to speak to this woman. You know what she confessed? She says, you know, I've been bluffing people for years. Just say, what do you mean you've been bluffing people for years? She says, the Lord caught me out tonight. Just say, what do you mean, dear, the Lord caught you out tonight? People think I'm saved. People think I'm a Christian. And she broke down and she wept bitter and she says, I was never saved. And that night she put it right. And she was baptized about a year later and joined the fellowship there. And I remember one other night preaching down in Kilishandra. Kilishandra's away down in South Cavan. And I preached that night in Judas. And here was my text. Woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had never been born. And I preached that night on that man, that man in prophecy. You'll find Judas in prophecy, Zechariah chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. And I preached on that man in ministry, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, how the Lord Jesus sent the twelve Judas among them to preach the gospel. And I preached that night on that man in eternity. Acts chapter 1, verse 25, it talks about Judas who went to his own place, friends. A man who preached the gospel. A man who was one of the twelve. A man came out to me that night, and this is one of my early years in my ministry. Floods of tears. Oh, I'm not saved, I'm not saved. And listen, friends, I, I never rush anybody into anything. And I counseled him, and I'll tell you this, friend, he was saved. But he was scared that he wasn't. And I want to share something tonight with Judas and with Simon. It was all show. There was no salvation. 
And I'm afraid tonight for many people, it's all show. And it's all sound and there's never been salvation. Then will I profess unto them. There's not only the words of exposure here, there's the words tonight. There's the words of explanation. This is how Jesus explains it. I never knew you. I never knew you. Many there'll be that'll say in my day, Lord, I taught in Sunday school. The Lord Jesus will say to you, I never knew you. But Lord, I used to sing in the choir. The Lord Jesus will say, I never knew you. Lord Jesus did not realize I was Christian. I never knew ye. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. There'll be many that day who will say, Lord, do not remember the mission that I attended. Do not remember the mission that I called. Do not remember the mission, Lord. I never knew ye. I never knew ye. Why? Because there's never any repentance from sin. Every time I counsel anybody to, for salvation, friends, I never rush them in. I make sure they're ready. And there's three things, friends, sinners need to know. First of all, the seriousness of their sin. And tonight, if you have never been gripped by the seriousness of your sin tonight, there's something wrong. God will never call any man without conviction of sin tonight, and I don't care who or she is. Godly sorrow over sin leadeth to repentance, the Bible says. And the Bible says in sin, we were born in sin and shape and in iniquity. And sinner friend tonight, unless tonight, listen to me, unless the seriousness of sin grips your heart, listen tonight what the Bible says. Your sins have hid his face from you. That should scare you to me. And I'll tell you, second principle sinners need to know, the road to repentance. We have a gospel of the day with no sin in it. We have the gospel of the day with no repentance in it. Oh, come to Jesus whatever way you want. You'll not come to Jesus whatever way you want. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16, the greatest verse in the Bible. It only appears once in the Bible, but the Lord Jesus said something in Luke 13. Twice he said it, not just the once, twice. He only quoted John 3, 16 once, but he quoted this twice. Do you know what it says? Except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. You can believe in John 3, 16 all you want, but unless you repent from your sin, you'll never be saved. People say, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall, thou shalt be saved. That's true. But as long as there's repentance, if there's never repentance from sin, you can call from now to the cows come home. You'll never be saved. I never knew ye, he'll tell you. And the third principle is tonight is the Christ of Calvary. Unless you see him tonight as the only Savior of sinners, you'll never be saved either. But neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Words of explanation, I never knew you. But in that text you've got words of exclusion because he says, depart from me. Listen, friends, these are words you don't want to hear. Christ say, it's better these words are coming from me because at least they give you a chance. But do you see if you hear Christ say these words, you're doing a see. If you're holding on to an empty profession tonight, you're as doomed as the drunkard on the street. Imagine all your life you've sat in gospel meetings. Gospel missions. And man, you've heard the text preach. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come unto me. Come unto me. Come unto me. To hear him say, depart from me. Friend, what a horror to think of it. And 
Lord says to you, ah, but you had your way. You had your time. And you spent all your life bluffing others. And you spent all your life bluffing yourself. To hear him say, depart from me. The Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 6, I think it is, it says the hypocrite's hope shall perish. Then will I profess unto them I never knew you. Depart from me. You know, these are words tonight. You never want to hear Christ say. And I believe tonight with all my heart that not by half a dozen stand there. I say I believe there'll be a whole congregation of people standing there. You'll hear them words. I never knew you. Depart from me. And some of them people never missed a meeting. I'm telling you tonight, friend, before I finish, if you're playing on it, stop playing tonight. Repent and get saved. Before you hear these words, A lot of boys going to get their eyes open on the day of judgment. I'll tell you, they'll get their ears open. But I want you to notice the words of expression at the end of that text that says, ye workers of iniquity. What do you mean, Lord, I'm, I'm a worker of iniquity? Any man who plays at it, he's just a worker of iniquity. But Lord, I went here. I done this. You are only a worker of iniquity. These are the words of Christ, friends. And it's better we all sat up and listened to what he has to say tonight before it's too late. It's better to hear these words through a preacher tonight than hear them from him because once we hear them from him, if you hear them tonight, it's too late. I often wondered about the poor men who worked in the ark. And the rains come and they're banging on the ark and this boy shouts, Noah, Noah, let me in, let me in. So Noah, I was your right-hand man, but the Lord says you're a worker of iniquity. But Lord, Lord, I masterminded the ark and I put, I planed the wood and I cut the wood. Lord, it was me who put half of it together. You're just a worker of iniquity. Any person who plays Christianity is as much as a worker of iniquity than anybody. Tonight God's call to this meeting is to make sure you're Salvation is an election sure to me. We're not going to have a closing hymn.
What we are going to do now is just take a wee moment and we'll bow before the Lord. And friends, this is not between you and me. This is between you and the Lord tonight. And this message has been so, so heavy on my heart all day. I would have loved to run away tonight. But I was to bring the message. I want every head bowed now. Eyes closed.